In this final video, I want to tie together all of the ideas of derivatives of scalar fields and attempt to give some unified description of the derivative in higher dimensions. To do this, I'm going to go back to the single variable derivative briefly. If I have a single variable function f, I can take its linear approximation at a point a f of a. f is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. The right side here is a linear equation, so its graph is a line. And this graph is just the tangent line, the and the slope of the graph, f prime of a, is the derivative, as you would expect. I've just written the equation of the line in a slightly new form. And I can also move the f of a over to the left. In this form, I can think of the negative f of a and negative a on the left and the right as shifts of a graph shifting this from the origin to the point a f of a. Other than these shifts, all that is happening is multiplication by f prime of a. This leads me to a new interpretation of the derivative. Instead of being the slope of the tangent line, the derivative is the multiplicative factor for the best approximation of f as multiplication by a constant, at least up to a shift. Multiplying by multiplication by a constant is a linear operation, and this makes sense since the approximation is a line, the tangent line. After the shift, the multiplicative factor f prime of a is all I need to know. In this sense, I can say that the derivative as a multiplicative factor is the best linear approximation to the function. Now, let me take a two variable scalar field and its tangent plane. Again, I can think of the tangent plane as the graph of a linear function and make f approximately equal to this linear function at the point a, b. The interpretation is the same here. This is the best linear approximation to the function. The tangent plane is just the graph of the best linear approximation to the function. I can do a little bit better here even. For those of you who have some linear algebra, if I take f of a, b over to the left, like I did for the single variable case, then I can write this in matrix notation with the partials in a one by two horizontal matrix and the variables with their shifts in a vertical two by one matrix. Then up to a shift, this linear approximation is a linear transformation defined by a matrix as it should be. The matrix M in this equation is the matrix with the partial derivatives. So, the best linear approximation to the function is to give up to a shift by the matrix of the partial derivatives. This idea generalizes to higher dimensions and to vector fields as well, those functions with multiple inputs and multiple outputs, which we will deal with later in the course. All such functions can be approximated by a linear function, and that linear function, like all linear functions, is described by a matrix. The matrix that does this will be the matrix that will have all of the partial derivatives in it, and it is called the Jacobian matrix for the function. And this is the last kind of the derivative extension, the derivative as a linear approximation expressed by the matrix of partial derivatives. In all of this, if the use of matrices and the matrix action for linear functions is unfamiliar to you, don't fret. I'm not going to ask you to calculate with any matrices. You can just stick to the tangent plane calculations, which don't need the matrix language. I'm just including, including this language for those who do have linear algebra, since it is the natural language for linear transformations. The key idea is that in any dimension, the derivative can be holistically thought of as the best linear approximation to the function at a point expressed as a matrix full of partial derivatives. So let me recap the ideas of the derivative I've introduced in these last two weeks. I started with a single variable ideas with slopes of tangent lines and rates of change. The first generalizations to scalar fields were partial derivatives, the rate of change in one of the variables, each one separately. Then I put them together into a vector to get the gradient, which was a vector that pointed in the direction of greatest change. With the gradient, I could define directional derivatives, which allowed me to consider the rate of change in any local direction from a point in the domain. 
Trying to I generalize the idea of a tangent line, I define tangent planes or hyperplanes and their normals. And I didn't really develop the idea much past. I didn't do the equations for the higher versions of this, but it does extend to tangent hyperplanes and higher dimensions, and all of these are likewise defined by normals. Finally, in this video, I got to the idea that the derivative is the best linear approximation of the function, and that linear approximation, at least up to a shift, is described by the matrix partial derivatives, which I called the Jacobian matrix. What does this all mean? Well, at the end here, I want to argue that the derivative as linear approximation is the most useful and complete generalization of the derivatives. Slopes of tangent lines and rates of change were hard to generalize directly. Partials are, well, partial. They only capture individual pieces of the change. The gradient puts them together, but it is only one piece of the puzzle, pointing only in one particular direction. The directional derivatives were more flexible with infinitely many directions, but each of them individually was still only one piece. Tangent planes were great geometrically and to generalize, tan generalize tangent lines, but they were a bit hard to interpret. The linear approximation is the best way to think of the derivative. It has all the rates of change involved. It has all the partials as its components, and from those it can recover any directional derivative. However, unlike the gradient, which put all the partials together, the linear approximation captures all the dynamics of the function at the point. It's a whole linear transformation, not just a direction of greatest change. The graph of this linear transformation is the tangent plane, which gives the tangent plane a functional interpretation as well. That's my takeaway from this section. The best way to generalize the derivative is as the best linear approximation to the function. This generalization also pays dividends in all the future directions of calculus. If derivatives are to extend from here to vector fields as well, or even to more exotic branches of mathematics, the derivative as linear approximation is the version that extends clearly and completely. From this point on, you should simply think of the derivatives as linear approximations, with all the other pieces of them just aspects of that concept.